position and click the button present okay yeah so this should be okay hello everybody and today we're going to be looking at the film weathering with you and some of the basic japanese in the film so we're just going to go through it go through some basic some vocabulary some grammar points and hopefully if you're just starting to learn Japanese, this can help you. So, first of all, um, what I will do throughout this lesson is take clips from the film. And as you can see, we've got dialogue. I have put the dialogue in the original Japanese. I put it in Romaji for some of you who are still learning Hiragana and Katakana. And then you've got the English translation underneath. We also have vocabulary and we have um, some tips, like maybe some grammar tips in some cases and just some tips to remember when um, approaching the Japanese language. So, actually we're going to watch the clip and go from there. Okay, so emotional. If you haven't watched the film, I guess that's a spoiler because that's right at the end of the film. but. Yeah, <laughs> as you probably notice, if you were trying to follow the dialogue, you probably notice it's not exactly the same as what you watched. And that's because this dialogue underneath is in more of a formal formal way. So I've changed it so it's formal dialogue. Uh, if we look at the original dialogue, we can see that it's a bit different. And if you're new to Japanese, you're probably starting to hear that um, the Japanese language has different levels of formality which are so ingrained into the culture as well as the grammar so it's important to particularly learn how to structure, structure sentences in formal ways and then gradually learn to be informal because it's better to be formal and speak formal in Japanese than it is to just speak informally and that's because it's just more polite and more respectful to speak formally in Japanese culture. And if you speak like um, like, like a, a protagonist out of a shonen anime, it's not the way you'd speak in real life. And you'll find that anime uses a lot more informal. So this is the original. You will look at Hina-san, Hodaka, Hodaka, doshita no daijoubu. So. If we have a look at Hina and Hodaka, the reason why I've not put the Romaji underneath these is basically because these are the names. Exactly there is exactly as it is here. So you can see Hina, this is the Katakana, and this is the Hiragana. This is the Katakana. Throughout this, I use the Katakana for names. So it just separates the text a bit, but katakana and hiragana work together in the Japanese language along with kanji, which we'll approach later in the lesson. So we've got hinasan, you can just play every play. The hinasan, super loud, sorry that wasn't as emotional, but <laughs> you can see um, san is used at the end of um, the phrase here, san which if we go back we can see using honorifics is um, an important thing in Japanese in fact not just informal but in it, not just in formal situations but sometimes in informal situations it's usual to have honorifics and it's good to learn them san is the most popular not most well popular is probably not the right word but the most commonly used honorific and you should add these to everybody's names apart from yourself if you're speaking about yourself um, which you if you ever refer to yourself by your name in every situation I don't know what situation that would be you wouldn't refer to yourself with an honorific like San at the end so if I my name was Hodaka I wouldn't say Hodaka San that sounds strange but if you're referring to other people, San can be used for everybody, uh, male, female, older, younger. And if you're unsure which one to use, that's the safest one. Now we've got Hadaka. Um, yeah, again, this is Katakana. Hadaka, okay, let's even play it. <laughs> Hadaka, 
Um, so, Doshtano is basically saying what's wrong, and Daijovu is saying, are you okay? Daijovu has a kind of, it can be used in a lot of situations. If you someone says, asks you, Daijovu desu ka? Like, are you okay? And you can just respond by saying, Daijovu. Or you could say, Heiki desu, Heiki. So, there's, um, Daijovu can be used to say, are you okay? And Daijovu can be like saying, um, you can ask the question, are you alright? Or, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so passionate. <laughs> As you can see, he responds with Daijobu. She asks with Daijobu, he responds with Daijobu. Obviously, it's not just Daijobu, he says un hina san un if you look at the other text it says hai hai and the difference between un and hai is un is used in informal situations as you can see these two clearly are affectionate so for each other so it's a bit more informal so you probably just use um hai if you're being formal and hina san now you can see you got just Hina-san, which is still the same here. Um, he's still being respectful in some way. Boktachi wa is what he says. Whereas if you're speaking formally, it's watash tachi, watashi tachi. Now we'll go into why, what the difference is between boku and watashi in a bit. But you can see there is a a difference. There's two different words, and you got the same tachi wa kito daijoubu. This again here, daijoubu desu ka? So, yeah, so when you're using formal, you use formal endings such as des and mas, these are important. And when you go into learning verbs, it's important to learn the mas um, ending of verbs because that's important. And yeah, yes or no questions, hai or ye, ye. Uh, again, when you pronounce that, it's e e e e longer vowel. And yeah, so that's just basics on how to be formal. And a bit of the vocabulary at the side, as you've probably seen, kitto is suggesting we are. It's not, as I'm trying to say, it's we are definitely okay, but kitto is like more of an assurance, which is backed up by the fact daijoubu da. Da is the. It's similar to this, it's used in the same way as this, but it's more of a declaration. You wouldn't usually use it in speech. You might say daijoubu da yo instead of daijoubu da. But it's just to emphasize um, the fact that he's making a declaration, he's making a statement that despite everything that's going around, they're gonna make it, they're gonna be okay. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. Okay, so I mean, I just put basically how to structure a Japanese sentence because I went through the vocabulary, I went through the formality, but, but how do you make a sentence in the first place? Oops, I didn't use capital letters, but here you've got the romaji, you got the Japanese, um, and actually the most important point in a Japanese sentence is that the verb tends to go at the end. The verb is the most important thing, and um, generally, you can actually just use the verb to describe what you want to say. So verbs are quite important. So we have this. So this is the um, formal sentence. I've broken it down to the informal sentence. And here's how you could translate it roughly. We, Wokutachi, Oa, surely, okay, da. I made a rough translation. Um, but what is wa and da? Wa is marking the subject, which is pronounced wa. If you're learning hiragana, you say, but that's pronounced ha, right? It is the hiragana for ha, but when you're using it as a subject marking, marking particle, you'll say wa. You pronounce that as wa, which is used after the subject. What is the subject in this sentence? It's the bokutachi, it's we will be okay. The focus is on we. 
so that's why after Bokutachi we have wa. You might find this strange, but Japanese and Japanese particles are used all the time. So it's good to start learning to get used to these. Kitto daijoubu da. Again, I said that is declarative ending. It roughly translates to is or are, but it's better to just, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that it's difficult to translate, but you can also, you can kind of say that we surely okay are. So you, you, you'll notice that, um, da, da yo, des, these are meaning is or are in referring to something. Um, ending more commonly used in speech is probably da yo, da yo. If this is informal speech, by the way, if you're speaking formally, you're going to use des, which is the formal alternative, as stated in this PowerPoint. So, yeah, next thing, we're going to look at I. Here's the I. What is I? Myself, me, myself, I. The universal usage for I is watashi, that can be used in formal situations and perhaps some informal situations. Basically, if you don't know which one to use, use watashi. In formal situations, use watashi. Important. There are other words for I, though. You got boku, you got ore, you got atashi, and so at, you can see the different nuances when you um, actually say the word I and how it refre re reflects you as an individual. Um, ore is more, it's rough, it's used by men or guys or even boys generally. Um, boku might be used more by young boys um, and atashi might be used by females who want to sound a bit more feminine. So different nuances and so you can add tachi on the end of that um, I. Like watashi tachi, boku tachi, which means we. So tachi add that onto the end of boku or watashi, and that means we. So you got I and you got we. Pretty simple. Okay, so we're going to watch the next clip, and just I want you to listen to what the girl, I forgot her name, Hina san, says when she clasps her hands together and see if you can work out what she's saying. Shame. Um, onegai. When you're asking for something, like a request, you can use this phrase, but in this case, it more sounds like um, a prayer request. Um, the more common, like, more common usage for onegai would be Onegai shimasu, onegai shimasu. That's more commonly used if you're saying please and it's used in formal situations and you can just use it in general as a set phrase. So if you want to speak like a first few sentence, like you want to say, oh, you want something and you're not sure how particles work yet, you can just practice by saying kore. So kore means this, kore. Onegaishimasu, onegaishimasu. And that means, can I have this, please? So that is commonly used. When you're introducing yourself, you might introduce yourself as Yoroshiku, onegaishimasu. This is what you say if you're going to say, um, for example, Hajime mashite, watashi wa uh, hodaka. There's Yoroshiku Enagaishimas, which is kind of translates pleased to please to meet you, but just remember that as a set phrase Yoroshiku Onegaishimas. Um, as you can see, the mas at the end, which makes it formal, makes a formal sentence. Okay, um, I want to play the, the, the second part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, it's, yeah, that was basically it. Her prayer caused that. And I'm showing you guys quite a I mean, it's not a spoiler, but if you've not watched the film, then watch the film and then come back. 
Um, yeah, so if you're gonna say onegaishimasu, uh, I guess you could say like hitotsu onegaishimasu or so if you're gonna ask for hitotsu means like one thing, so can I have this one thing please? So if you see you want um if you want a cookie in the shop and you see one cookie and you say and they ask you how much cook how much do you want, like how many cookies do you want? Hitotsu onegaishimasu something like that um you could use um sushi you want sushi sushi on a gaishimasu ringo ringo is apple so again ringo on a gaishimasu niku 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 which is meat so niku on a gaishimasu cheese um again you can see with katakana you have this dash which basically um prolongs a vowel sound so because this is pronounced as chi that e at the end of chi is prolonged cheese cheese and then gaishimasu pan is bread chocolate i'll let you work that one out chocolate and gaishimasu choco and gaishimasu and yeah so uh-huh Ah, another another clip. Hopefully it won't freeze. Arigato. Madaka. Another nice simple phrase. Arigato. And that means when you're thanking someone you use this phrase Arigato. So in this case it's Arigato Hadaka san. Oh she's being formal now, she's using san, so this is showing respect. Say it formally, you'd add gozaimasu, so you'd say arigato gozaimasu. Again, don't think too much on the grammar. In fact, the grammar for gozaimasu is um, strange. So, it's not strange, it's just not as commonly come across gozaimasu. So, just focus on remember it, remembering it as a set phrase, arigato gozaimasu meaning thank you in a formal setting. You could say domo arigato gozaimasu in full. Domo, and if you've been informal you could just say domo and that also means thank you. Um, yeah, so you can probably see as well I've just broken it down the, how you pronounce arigato to u to u to. You see with um Sounds with vowels, so to o, you just um, join the vowel sounds together, so it's not arigato o. <laughs> arigato. O. Okay, so questions. Each, um, yeah, each language has a word for a question, so you get to learn some questions. Doshio. So doshio is like, what should we do? Um, so this is just another set phrase to remember. Again, dare <laughs> means who, anta means you. But we will get on to you in a bit. So if you're saying, oh, does that mean you? It does, but you is something that we need to address and we will in a bit. Um, so hold your pens. We will talk about that in a second. And it got. Okay, so. Doko. Doko means like where. So you got doko, where, dare, who, doshio, which generally translates as what should we do. Um, aha! What's this? We've got a kanji. <laughs> so, this is um, our kanji. As you can see, kanji works in sentences with hiragana and katakana. So they all work together in a single sentence. I put this because this is a common kanji. And it's a good kanji to remember because it's quite nice. Um, see if you can guess the meaning. And we'll address the meaning in a bit. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> the meaning is on this slide. Um, Okay, so the kanji, this is the kanji, it means to see, and it's made up of the I um, radical. Radicals are components of kanji. So 
each kanji, even the most complicated ones, can be broken up into smaller parts. In this case, we've got we can break this kanji up into legs and an eye. So an eye on top of legs, and I guess a human being has legs and they have eyes above the legs. Not not literally an eye and attached to legs. That would be some sort of strange monster, but but we've got that as a kanji however you want to help you help to remember that you can do you can imagine a horrifying monster an eyeball on legs <laughs> but yeah whatever works for you i guess um and it's used a lot for the verb to see because the kanji means to see so this is miru miru and you pronounce that as a miru miru the thing is though um with kanji you don't you still use the same hiragana and katakana to pronounce kanji well use hiragana but you would use that to pronounce a kanji so each all the kanji that you come across it's not just a completely new pronunciation you still use the same phonetic system that you use to learn hiragana and katakana for each of these kanji and one of the things when learning kanji is to remember what um hiragana phonetics to use for which kanji and that changes depending on when and where the kanji is used if you want a bit more of an introduction into kanji there is a kanji lesson on the youtube channel and you can just check that out and get get refreshed or get understanding what kanji is all about so yeah so we'll move on we've got some more questions um yeah, nice and simple dialogue. Um, again, chotto matte, which is um, chotto matte, which means basically wait a minute. So if you're saying to someone, oh, wait a minute, like you you want someone to wait a minute, you can say chotto matte. If you're going to say that more formally, you could say chotto matte kudasai, chotto matte kudasai. That would be something to use formally. Um, nande is more saying why again this is informal kuso again this kind of means crap but this is all informal language so if we're gonna say like why or in a bit more formal situation which I don't know why you'd use formal when speaking to yourself but <laughs> you, you usually, usually use informal if you're speaking to yourself but formal you can say nande ka Nandeska. That's formal. Um Chotto Matte yo. Chotto matte yo. Now yo is more emphasizing Chotto matte like wait wait <laughs> So yeah so nani means what which you probably heard nani but nanda can also mean what but in this case nande has a reason like it has kind of a pronunciation of saying why it kind of means why. Um yeah, okay, so we've got this yeah, and yeah, so we got Hora. Hora is what she kind of saying, come, come, come over here. Again, this is all informal language. Um, kochi, 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 um, which means like, come over here. Korea, so, ko, so Korea is like um, informal way of saying kore, kore, so this, kore, Korea, Korea, asoko. Asoko means over there, or are means something that's over there and that's actually something i want to address quickly because i don't think it's this slide on it there are differences in saying um if something is saying this thing or that thing so saying this thing is you'd say kore so if we're going to use a sentence kore wa nan desu ka it's like what is this if you're going to say something that's um so this kore is used for something that's closest to you. So if you're holding something in your hand and you're saying kore wa nan desu ka? You're asking like, what is this? If you are, if someone else is holding something up, like the person you're speaking to, then you'll say sore wa nan desu ka? So sore is when something is closer to the listener when you're speaking. And if it's something that's away from both you and the listener, the person you're speaking to, then you say, 
Arewa non desu ka? So someone in the distance is picking something up that's, and they're not related to your conversation, you'd be like, Arewa non desu ka? So you're saying like, what is that? So again, you got asoko, which is like over there, like what is that over there away from both of us? Um, or asoko is saying like, come, come, it's over there, away from both of us. If it's like here, the word for here is koko. The word for closer to the other person, um, if it's close to the other person, it's soko. And then if it's like, we don't know where it is, you've got toko, which is where. <laughs> so we're kind of learning that. So koko here, soko there, asoko over there, and doko where. Um, Again, nani mo ne jan, which is super slang of saying nani mo nai, which means nothing. Um, formerly, you'd say nani mo arimasen. Nani mo arimasen. Arimasen. Now, you probably notice when I'm saying r, like the re sound, it's kind of a mix between a l and a r sound. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a rolling of the tongue, just but not too much. Um, so, arimasen. Nani mo arimasen. And arimasen, it means to have, well, to not have, sorry, arimasen. So, if you have arimas, that means to have. This is formal. Arimas is to have. Arimasen is to not have. And then the informal way of saying have is nai. So if you're saying nani mo nai, you're saying nothing or you have nothing or there is nothing. Um, yarun datte, yoku mitte kure yo. So you got this mitte again, which is suggesting miru, mitte, to look over there. Now, there's different conjugations for kanji verbs. Or verbs in general. There's different con conjugations which we won't go through in this lesson, but we might go through in a later lesson. But in this, it's using the te form, which is instead of miru, it's saying mi te. And te means if you have the te form, you can usually either add something after it to kind of explain a further point or explain further onto that verb. So Yokumite kureyo. Nanda. It's like, what is that? Are. What's that? Over there. Are. Nanda are. Nanda are. So, yeah. Okay. Big question. How to say you in Japanese? Now, you can't. It, it says you don't. Because. Not because you just don't say you. It's just because when you say you, there's a lot of different nuances. And if you're beginning to learn Japanese, it might be better to not use you. Um, so there's no single generic term. Like for saying I, you could just say watashi and that's okay. You'd be safe. But here, um, if you're saying you, there's so many different nuances. It might be better to refer to someone by their actual name. Get their name, say their name and san or the honorific at the end of that person's name and that's not unnatural because you might find a lot of languages you refer to someone as you but in Japanese you can refer to someone by their name whilst you're talking to them and that's natural so yeah context also explains everything so you don't have to say you all the time you don't have to say I all the time in fact Japanese is such a context-based language you don't need to use pronouns all the time and it's quite easy to understand who you're talking about without having to use pronouns all the time. Um, for example, you could just pick up... If I picked up something and say, Nan desu ka? I don't have to say, Kore wa nan desu ka? Like, compared to English, where you have to say, What is this? You don't have to say, you could just say, Nan desu ka? And that just summarizes everything that you're saying um, you're clearly talking about what you're holding in your hand so <laughs> there's different words of you that you might have heard in anime and I gonna stress don't use these
look them if you want to find out what each one is means look them up but don't use them in conversation do not especially when you're learning japanese i've just put them so you can see the different words you got omae kimi anata or anta and these are quite rude these are very rude actually you probably hear this so often in anime you probably think you may think it's okay to use in speech in real life don't because anime is nothing like real life <laughs> it's it's not a good thing to do so honestly if you want to refer to someone best to refer to them by their name and add the appropriate honorific like san and then if you wanted to um and, and you don't have to in all situations refer to their name all the time you could just refer to their name and you can just based on the context you can um, refer to them without having to use their name all the time okay so a bit of a dialogue now and all of a sudden we have whoa a lot of kanji at the side and honestly don't worry too much about that we're going to go through these kanji slowly but i'm just slowly introducing you to kanji so you can go away and practice these in your own time so see if you can follow the dialogue it's going from down here top to bottom top to bottom i love the music in that as well but yeah um yeah so we can just go through the dialogue and again, this dialogue is mostly informal. So, if we take the first sentence, ne ima kara hareru yo, hareru yo. If you were going to say informally, you probably say ima kare haremas yo, haremas, which is just adding that mas form to make it more formal. But um, ne in this context kind of is bringing attention to something. Ne ne ne, like. You're trying to bring someone's attention to something, and in this case, it's the fact that she wants to show him that the clouds are about to open, it's about to be sunny. And eh, eh is a common interjection to kind of express a lot of different emotions, actually. It could be like surprise, it could be like confusion. Um, that kind of nuance here, you choose eh or eh or eh, that sort of thing. Um, okay. So you got sore te doyu. So this is an informal way of writing something. Um, sore means again, like we said, that. So in this case, sore, the that in this situation is actually what she just said. So it's almost saying, what do you mean by that? Doyu, doyu means like almost suggesting, what do you mean? Do you do you me this guy? So like, what do you mean by that? And you're wanting an explanation, and this te, this te, is almost suggesting like a quote. So this sore is from what she was saying before. So what did you sore te do you? Like what did you mean by that that you just said earlier? This te you probably notice is a small if you've learned hiragana you probably see this as tsu and this tsu means a slight pause in the pronunciation so instead of sore te doyu or sore tsu te or whatever sore te doyu sore te doyu so remember that pause as you're pronouncing um, and hare onna which we'll, we'll cover in a second but you can see two nice kanji there but we'll, we'll, we'll cover that later it's a specific Japanese concept, so I'd like to address that later. Then you got, oh, I didn't change it. <laughs> uh, obviously, I've made a mistake with my um, spelling. Watashi, watashi, sorry, sorry, it's really bad. Watashi, Hina. As you can see, she's not referring to herself as Hina-san. Just watashi, Hina. Kimi wa? So in this case, she's probably using Kimi, which means you to kind of suggest herself as a little bit older so Kimi can kind of be used is used in the nuance of you're old and you're speaking to someone who's younger and you can actually see later on in the dialogue she um, suggests she says that she's a certain age older than him so by that she's probably trying to say I I'm older than you 
when she actually isn't. But that's a spoiler. <laughs> Hodaka, again, Hodaka just says Hodaka, that's his name. He doesn't have to say Hodaka san. Ikitsu, how old are you? Ikitsu. Ikitsu desu ka? Or how old are you? Juroku. Now, I should have said before, if you could try and work out what number that is. It's a number, and I put all the numbers at the side. Um, so, try and work out the number for this, and try and work out the number for this, which is Juhachi, by using it at the side. And I'll let you try and work that out as I go through the rest of the, um, the, the dialogue. So, we've got... Toshishitaka, 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 but when we're pronouncing, because you've got Toshi and Shita, again, if you look at the, the kanji here, this is the kanji, it's pronounced Shita, 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 but you don't usually pronounce the E, so it's kind of a Shita. So remember in Japanese, sometimes when the uh, in certain pronunciations, not everything is pronounced. Generally, um, Japanese is nice when you're looking at a text, you, you pronounce most of the, the dialogue without having to um, change pronunciation and try and think of how you pronounce a certain word like you do in English. It's just if you read it, that's how you pronounce it. However, certain vowels such as toshita, toshishitaka, toshishitaka, you probably find that the, the vowels are slightly merged in with the rest of the pronunciation. And that's just natural, and that's just something to listen out for. So, Toshishitaka, if you're going to say this um, in, in, in informal, because this is in, this is an informal way, if you're going to say it formally, you'd say, Toshishita desu ka? Again, adding that desu ka, just to be asking a question. Toshishita. So, Toshi means year. Shita means down. So, if you're a year down... You're younger. As you can see, the kanji is literally pointing down, so that's one way to remember that it means down. Okay, so, atashi wa ne. So, this ne in this case is used to thinking. And you've got this wa. This wa means, um, it's the subject mark marking particle, so she's bringing attention to herself. Atashi wa ne. Rai getsu de. Juhachi. So, rai getsu. You got getsu, which means month, and rai, which means next. Rai has a kanji, but I'm not putting the kanji at the moment, but you can um, start to see how kanji works in sentences. You got getsu just at the bottom here as well, if you want to look at that. So, miene, miene, really? Or you don't really look at it. Again, mienai would be more like. Um, You'd say mienai, but it's a bit informal and miene kind of comes out. Um, you could say, if you wanted to be formal, honto desu ka? Honto desu ka? Which honto means like, really? It has the same nuance as what he's saying here, miene. So if you're responding to something and you're uh, uh, responding surprise in a formal situation, it could be honto desu ka? And if it's an informal situation, you could say, Honto? Or, Maji de? Which is like super informal, but I'm showing you the <laughs> different nuances. Um, okay, so here we go. Toshi ue ni, or keigo nen. So, Toshi ue is the opposite of Toshi shita. Ue means up. Ue. So, Toshi ue means. Um, year up, which is literally older. So it's nice when kanji actually has logical meaning, which you'll find actually a lot of kanji has some sort of logical meaning, which can help you to remember the kanji. So toshi ue ni okego nen. So okego, okego means formal, like formal language, and nen is just uh, an informal ending. So you got okego, which is saying olders, formal language. This ni, think about this ni, ni is a particle. And I'll quickly cover the particle. I know I might be going through a lot today, so after this, we'll, <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take a small break and um, 
we'll just basically just cover um, we'll cover something but we'll take a break so just take your time again if you're watching this video just um, take your time to the video to write things down and if there's something you don't understand then you can always either join the discord group which is in the description as well or you can comment below this YouTube video and ask a question and you can get an answer from there so yeah it might be a lot as you're learning, but I'm just giving you a flavour into the language bit by bit. Um, so, ni is a particle used to talk to, use meaning towards something, going towards something. So, in this sentence, it's toshi ue ni okego nen. So, older people towards you should use formal language. Formal language towards older people. You probably see that actually in Japanese the sentence structure is different. It's usually the other way around. So instead of saying you should be polite to your elders, it's saying elders to be, po be polite. Elders towards be polite. Um, so that's how you would um, structure a sentence it's usually the other way around again if you come up to here imakara hareru yo again hey it's going to be sunny now you got imakara now from now hareru means it's going to be sunny now you probably know it's ima you got ima here and ima there but i haven't covered kara and this is another particle. I know it's a lot of particles, but kara means from something. So from this point. So ima means now, kara means from this point. So it's saying from this point now, it's going to be sunny. Suggesting it wasn't sunny before, but now into the future, in this case, a near future, it's going to be sunny. Okay. So, yeah, so you'll see that the sentence order is flipped and you can see, kind of, get an idea of how much, um, um, sorry, how much particles are used in Japanese. Again, one more example of particle is here. Kimi wa, kimi wa. So actually, you would say may maybe like um, kimi no namae wa nan desu ka. You wouldn't use kimi no namae wa if you're gonna be formal. <laughs> You'd say namae, which means name. Namae wa nan desu ka. Namae wa nan desu ka. So that's saying like, what's your name? Here, because it's formal, you don't have to say the full sentence because Japanese is a context-based language. If you just say you, kimi wa, it's almost saying, what about you? What's your name then? I've said my name, what's your name? And you can just say kimi wa, and that straight away means you're asking the other person in this context for their name as well. And finally, yoroshiku hodaka, yoroshiku hodaka, so she's kind of, again, like what we said, yoroshiku, um, and informal would be like, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. So that's the formal way of saying, like, nice to meet you, hodaka. Okay, so did you work out what the numbers were? So again, you've got the numbers here, so you probably worked out, this is juroku, juroku, which is, you can take ju, ten, roku, six, and we've got ten, six, 10, 6, 16. So that's how easy Japanese numbers are. So it's quite easy to remember. It's not like English where it's got different words and stuff. It's just juroku. Again, here you've got 10, ju, 8, 8, hachi, hachi, 8, 10, 8, 18. So she's saying she's older than Hodaka when actually she's only ju go. 
So, yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. This can be a question just for yourself. Nan sai desu ka? Which is like, how old are you? Um, how old are you? So, you can just refer to yourself and say your age using these numbers and um, just adding sai at the end. The, uh, <laughs> there are some exceptions. Um, for example, when you're saying ichi, instead of saying ichi sai, you wouldn't say that. You would say isai. If you're saying hachi, you wouldn't say hachi sai. You'd say hasai. So that's just something to remember. And you probably know it says shi anyon. So if you were going to say you're like 14 years old, you'd probably say juyon. But she is used if you're counting up. So you're counting ichi ni san shi go rok shi chi hachi kyu ju. She is used for counting. But yon is more commonly used say, if you're going to refer to your age. So nan sai desu ka? As you can see, this is the kanji briefly. This is the kanji for what? Nan, nani. This is that kanji. And it's a kanji for meaning years old. But it means sai. So you can say, I am. So, otashi datte, otashi wa niju sai desu. I'm 21 years old. So yeah. I've put another one, how to structure a Japanese sentence, which is basically what I was saying. Uh, is it what I was saying? I don't know if it was what I was saying. So I've taken the sentence, Watashi wa ne, raigetsu de hachi hachi, which is super informal. Watashi wa raigetsu de juhachi desu. So like, I wa next month de 18 desu. De in this context means at. There's different uses for de. But in this context, you can say, at this point or at this month, I am this years old. And actually, that gives you a start on how to say your months. You got, so um, if you're going to say like, so I'm born in May, personally, pers <laughs> personally so I can say, gogatsu, gogatsu. And actually, it's nice, months generally have a nice pronunciation ichigatsu, nigatsu, sangatsu, shigatsu, shigatsu for April gogatsu, rokugatsu, shichigatsu, hachigatsu instead of kyugatsu, it's kugatsu that's just the one difference kugatsu, jugatsu, juichigatsu, junigatsu and there's your, um, again, juichi, juni so quite easy hopefully it's easy <laughs> so the reason why this time period uh, is what i was trying to explain imakare hareru yo imakara hareru yo imakara so usually the time period is said before the information um so from this point the time it will be sunny so this is the verb hareru which means for clear skies um yeah, speak, which is, this is the point I was going to talk about, but I'll talk about this in a second, because speaking of clear skies, uh, oh my gosh, I've put everything on the slide. Here you go. Kore, sore, are, koko, soko, asoko. So you can see the different uses of uh, these different words. Um, but I was going to explain quickly what hare onna is, just to give you a break from um, a bit of all that Japanese learning. But hare onna, it means in Japanese culture that someone who, when they are around, it always seems to be sunny. So this can be also men, like hare otoko. So this gives you an idea, actually, you can break down this sentence. So this hare is what um, hareru comes from. Hareru. And this is the kanji for hare. Hareru. And you've got this kanji, which means woman or girl, the feminine. And that means otoko means man, male. So you've got otoko, man, onna, woman. So hare, onna, 
means the clear skies girl kind of translates to that but i don't want to translate it directly because it's kind of its own thing but yeah on the opposite you've got ame on that which are people where it, they, it, it's all around when they're around it always seems to rain you get um ame otoko as well so when they're around it seems to rain and this is the kanji for rain ame um, as you can see you've got little raindrops here um, which might help you to remember the kanji Hare is an interesting kanji because if you don't know already, you might not know that much kanji, but I'll sh I'm just going to show you this to show you how um, how useful sometimes kanji is to help you understand the meaning and help you remember kanji. This kanji here means sun. This kanji here means blue. So if you think of blue skies, the sun is out, clear skies, hare makes sense so <laughs> this this helps kanji can be very useful other times it's not <laughs> but uh, many, there are many times when it is useful a again you could maybe think of this kanji as showing like a woman's figure um as well maybe like curves you could also think of otoko because actually i, I believe the meaning for otoko sorry that just came on my screen so it's telling me to charge my laptop <laughs> otoko means um like how do you say it like you got otoko which is man you got this is a rice field and this is power so this would come from agricultural china where maybe the mostly the men if not all the men worked on the fields to bring in the crops so they needed the power to bring in the crops that's why this is man so nice little things to remember kanji by um yeah so yeah okay <laughs> we got back this is a quick grammar point that i just wanted to point out and this is an informal grammar point so remember don't use this in formal situations this is quickly used it's something to use that what happened before it so what's used before it is reported speech so this is this is which is like wait this means saying I said wait so he, it's implying that he's already said to this guy he's chasing up oh, wait stop running and he's saying it again Choto matte te. and again sore te do you which I just covered earlier so this is informal the formal might be to so to I use an example here but this is an example you use if you're going to say something informal and you want to refer to yourself as saying Oh, this is, I think, um, um, tatoeba, ashita wa ame o furu to moimasu. So you're saying, ame o furu to moimasu, which is basically saying, I think it's going to rain tomorrow, which is the other way around in Japanese, because I said, ashita wa tomorrow, ame o furu, rain to moimasu. So I think it's going to rain. Yeah, so, um, yeah. I'm going to play another clip, actually. Ame. 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 Ha, ita. Ame. Genki datta ka? Sokka, sokka. Erai. So the cat is also named Ame as rain. You probably noticed when I said Ashita wa Ame o furu, ame o furu toemoimasu. I need to pronounce <laughs> my, my pronunciation is a bit bad. Ashita wa Ame o furu toemoimasu. So you said, when I said rain, Ame o furu, I said. So actually, this is a, just a tip. When you describe that weather that falls, like rain or snow, you should include that word furu. So if you're referring to rain, you might say ame o furu, or ame o futteimasu, or yuki o futteimasu, or ame. So that, 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 don't worry about the ending if you're not sure about it. It's um, something that you could go and research further. Maybe I'll do a lesson on it as well. But for now, just if you can just remember ame or yuki, you can still get your point across. But usually you'd use ame o futemasu, yuki o futemasu. And 
I just happened to be um, covering a lot of particles. Here's one more particle, this little O, which is your object marking particle. So the object is not the subject, the focus, it's not the focus, but it's what is being, something is being done to, essentially. So the rain is falling, so ashtawa, which is tomorrow, I've got the wa to suggest this is the subject, this is the focus, tomorrow, ame o futeimasu. So this is the, the ame, the rain that is falling, so you use o after ame, and you got the verb to fall at the end. Yuki o futeimasu. And then you just got some weather names. Um, again, we've covered ame, hare, yuki. If you want to say it's cold, you can say samui, atsui. Um, and you can actually just say these by itself. So if you, you don't have to say it is cold today. You could just say samui, samui ne, or atsui ne, or samui, samui, or atsui. So that's something you can just say by itself to kind of convey the fact that it's cold. You don't have to say a whole sentence, you just have to say the one word and it makes sense. Kumori, cloudy. Kaze is wind or it's windy. And then kaminari, thunder. Taifu, you can guess what that is. Tenki, it, taifu is the same as what you might know in English. Tenki, weather, tsunami. You can you can guess what that is tsunami tsunami <laughs> which is it's it's um it's not a hurricane but it's there there is a difference between hurricane and tsunami and I can't remember kozui flood kozui niji rainbow tsuyu is a rainy season typhoon if you didn't know is typhoon sorry what am I talking about. <laughs> Tsunami is um it's it's a flood. So I'm getting confused between typhoon and because I'm thinking typhoon. Typhoon is the wind and tsunami is the water. Right, that looks bad. Sumi <laughs> masen, that I made a mistake. Oh, Okay, and just one last video. It's probably it's probably just becoming long now, and I'm saying stupid things. <laughs> I'm saying stupid things. Oh jeez. Um it's your thought then. Yeah, okay. So um yeah. Yeah, mote mote means someone who's popular with the ladies, mote mote jan, um mote mote. And actually just as a nice thing, um mote actually comes from the verb moteru, which is like to have or something, so moteru to have something, so I guess if you got motte motte, motte motte, motte is kind of popular, so motte motte is like you're popular. Um, as you know, it's Hadaka didn't use he, like he is popular or he seems popular with the ladies, he didn't say that, he just said motte motte jan, so it's already clear that he's talking about him being popular with the ladies, so yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for joining the lesson, I, I know it's a lot. Arigato gozaimasu. And yeah, um, <laughs> as you can tell by my accent, I'm not Japanese native, no way. <laughs> but um, I hope this helped anyway um, for you who are beginning. And well, I will I will include in the description like time codes. So if you want to get to jump to a certain point in the video, you can do. And um, so you don't have to try and watch through it all because it might be a lot to watch. But yeah, I really hope this helped. And yeah, I will upload the advanced lessons soon. And I've got loads of cultural lessons that we did over the summer that I need to upload as well. So they will be coming soon. And you can check out the other videos as well. There's a beginner's lesson in learning um, in starting the Japanese language, which is on YouTube. You can check that out. There's a lesson on kanji, which I mentioned in the video. You can check that out as well. And um, there's, there's a few more videos. There's a video on silent voice where I break down the, the vocabulary, which is a bit more, um, a slightly higher level. But if you want to have a look at it, you can, if you want. And um, yeah. So, thank you.
ありがとうございます。And, uh, じゃあまたね。How do I end it? <laughs>